In this video, I'm going to review the Anvil 7.5 gallon bucket fermenter as well as share a few tips and modifications that I've made to it to improve its function and that's coming up next. How's it going? My name is Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see product reviews just like this one and all sorts of other home brewing related stuff, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. Full disclosure on this, as always, I tell you guys whenever somebody sends me something, Anvil did send me two of these fermenters to do a review on. I wanted to dabble in some no-chill brewing and so they sent them over to me for me to do that and more on that in just a minute. The Anvil stainless steel bucket fermenter is a seven and a half gallon stainless steel fermenter. Um, it comes with a domed lid that has four clips that actually hold the lid on tight. And underneath of the lid is a seal that actually works pretty well and it's a silicone seal and it's removable and uh, goes around the entire circumference of the lid. Also included with the fermenter when you get it is a ball valve and the ball valve actually has a O-ring around the inside of it where it butts up against the fermenter itself. Along with that there's a locking nut for the backside, a nylon washer for the inside, there is a hose barb that goes on the ball valve and that is sealed by an O-ring on the inside there. There is also a dip tube that is sealed on the inside as well with an O-ring. There is a number seven stopper for the two valve airlock. There's also an adhesive LCD thermometer that goes on the front of it. So the way that you assemble this is pretty simple really. I mean the, the ball valve just goes in with no, uh, there's nothing on the front of it. The O-ring is built into it, is already stuck to it. The nylon washer goes in on the inside along with the locking nut. And what the nylon washer allows the ball valve to do is to swivel. And I'll show you a little bit more about that in just a second. But I found with using these that you don't need to tighten the ball valve down any excessive amount of pressure at all. Basically, I mean, it's just almost finger tight. And then the same way with the dip tube on the inside. And, you know, it just screws on there. Real simple, no tools needed at all for it. And one of the things that I recommend with the, the pickup tube that I found is putting it so that it is horizontal, as in, I mean, the pickup tube is, is horizontal when the ball valve is pointing straight down. What that will allow you to do is actually allow you to start racking off of the beer above the yeast cake. And then as it goes farther down, you can twist the ball valve and turn it down. And I'll show you what I mean by that, how that works. So basically when you, when you start twisting the ball valve, it actually controls the dip tube on the inside, which is pretty nice. And I found it to be super easy to control. No issues with that at all. The only thing that's a little awkward is the ball valve, you know, the, the uh, nozzle on the ball valve turns a little bit while you're doing it, but if you got enough hose, then you shouldn't have any issues at all. Um, there were some issues with the earlier units where the gradation marks on the inside were a little bit off. I will tell you that that's fixed. I, I checked it and everything is, if it's not dead on perfect, it's very, very close. Um, and then the other thing was the opening on top of the dome here was pretty was pretty sharp. And I mean, you can see I'm running my finger around there and, and these they've fixed that issue with these. So the stopper, it does have a little bit of a line on it from where I've shoved it in there pretty good. But I mean, it, it goes down in there pretty nice. And then your airlock goes on top, and I mean you're ready for you're ready for fermentation. Now my experience with these in the no chill method was that I was able to put wort that was probably 180 degrees in these, and the bottom the the plastic bottom is glued on with a high heat glue from what they told me. Didn't have any issues with it, no problems at all. Set them out in my garage. It chilled all the way down to like 50 something degrees. Was able to pitch the yeast on it and uh, fermented away. I didn't have any issues with any yeast coming up, you know, no, no uh, krausen coming up into the airlock or anything like that. So I think they are a great fermenter. One of the pluses of the stainless steel is that you don't have to worry about any kind of light intrusion. I did put these in my, like a sunroom that has a bunch of windows so that I could uh, use the cold air outside. I kind of shut off a couple of vents and use that to maintain my fermentation temperature at a lower temperature. 
and I didn't have to worry about if the windows, if the blinds were open or whatever, because there's no no issue with sun hitting it. The other thing that's nice about these is you're able to clean them with buckets. Obviously, you know you get scratches in those eventually at some point, and bacteria can hide in there. With these, you can you can clean them out thoroughly from top to bottom, disassemble everything. The ball valve disassembles, everything comes apart, the seals all come out. So you can definitely get these very very clean and sanitized. I like the fermenter a lot. And now I want to show you some of the modifications that I've come up with for it. And so let's take a look at those now. All right, so the first thing I want to share with you is a solution for a low oxygen transfer. Uh, I like to do a pressurized transfer. Anybody that's watched the channel knows that I've got a lot of videos on that. Check the description. I'll link up all of the products that I'm using for this modification as well as some of those other videos down in the description. So what I found out was that it had a number seven stopper in it. And I was able to buy a number seven stopper that was undrilled and drill a quarter inch hole in it. And I have my carbonation cap, which I've used for a lot of the other videos where I've done pressurized transfers from carboys and whatnot. So this will fit down in there. And then you can actually force this down into the top of the fermenter. And once you latch these on, you are good to go. Unfortunately, I know what you're thinking, thinking about pressurized fermentation. Well, unfortunately, the way that this is designed and the way the clips are and everything, there's the surface area of it, there's there's not enough seal to go above probably two or three PSI. I tried it with my uh, CO2 tank and it started leaking around here. So, I mean, you could kind of do a pseudo pressurized fermentation, but not exactly. So. It definitely works for that. And then the other the other thing that I'll use is uh, some beer line. And this is a 12 millimeter ID um, silicone tubing. And it actually fits really well on the ball valve. You gotta work it on there a little bit, but this ball valve is just a little bit, I mean, it's a half inch, but it's a small half inch, if you will. So it'll actually fit on there pretty good. And then once you put that on there, put your gas to it, put this on your keg, and then you're transferring, or if you wanna transfer to secondary, I did that as well. You can do that, put it on there, put this on your racking cane. So then that is the pressurized transfer modification that I've done to it. And then let's take a look at a solution for a possible temperature control. Like if you want to put these into a fermentation fridge or something like that, one of the first things you're going to need is a thermal well. And I found one of these on Amazon and it, it didn't have good reviews because of the fact that it's kind of a harder silicone and it wants to pop out of carboys all the time. But in our case where we have this hard lip, and I don't want to say sharp because it's not sharp, but where we have this sharp, sharp or hard lip, we can actually push this down in here and it is a number seven stopper by the way. Push it down in there and it is going to stay, I mean, no problem at all. So you can put your airlock in there right beside it. Then you can take your ink bird controller of choice or whatever your fermentation fridge control is. And that probe will actually fit right down inside of that, all the way down to the bottom. Plug in your fermentation fridge or your ferment fermentation cabinet and you are ready to go. So uh, all in all, I I'm really happy with the fermenters. I really like them. The only, there's only a couple of negatives, if you will. One of the negatives is that they're very thin. Uh, admittedly, at the price point that they're at, you can't get one millimeter thick fermenters for that. So, you know, that's probably one of the one of the downsides to it as far as that goes. Other than that, I really didn't find a whole lot that was, you know, a, a con to them. Um, the bottom is a, a dish. It's not necessarily a cone. Um, so, I mean, you do have to watch when you go to rack off and you get down there a little close when you start to get to the bottom because the racking cane will actually go almost all the way to the bottom of that of the cone it probably leaves about that much around the outside that it doesn't get to so just be aware of that but you know obviously you don't want to throw any fermenter around but if you if you toss this around it's probably going to dent but other than those two things i don't see why it's not a great investment for someone quite honestly and if you stay tuned to the channel i understand from anvil that there are going to be some other accessories and modifications for this that's going to make it even more useful to us home brewers so stay tuned for that and if you want to learn more about electric brewing see how to videos and product reviews like this one consider subscribing and if you do don't forget to click the bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out this has been brian for short circuit of brewers we'll see you on the next video